welcome everyone today. It's an absolute pleasure to, to be here and um, to present to you our very first ever Jarvis conference. Uh, this year it will be held online. Uh, as you can see, uh, we're all here together to listen to the space edition of JarvisCon. And we hope that next year we can actually organize it in person in Lisbon and hope to see you there as well. So in this online edition, we actually had four sessions in total. Uh, where we hear from some of the most experienced engineers in the industry um, who can share best practices, lessons learned, and it's really meant as a platform to engage with each other. Um, so uh, in the last two weeks, we had John Bennett from Nanorex and Sam Avery from Momentus, and this week we have Jada Stanisha joining us from OSB Sweden. Um, so I'll just very briefly go <clears throat> over the agenda, first of all, um, so we're starting off with a very short warm-up, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, after that, we'll have uh, a talk by our speaker, which will be about 30 minutes. And then in the end, we'll have about 15 minutes for, for Q&A. So I see that people are still joining. And for those also who are arriving now, um, please join us at, at this link, ahasite.com slash Jarvis. You can use your mobile phone, you can use your, your laptop, whichever device you're joining from. Um, because we're about to get started. So, yeah, maybe just very briefly about ourselves. Um, so we are Valley Space. Uh, we've built a collaborative software platform which serves as a smart collation platform for engineers to design complex hardware. So first off, I just want to um, give a shout out to my colleague and really thank my colleague Maria, who's been working very, very hard to set this up and put everything together um, we're very excited to be, uh, to be able to do this. So it wouldn't have been possible without her. Thank you so much, Maria. Um, okay, so let's get started. We have already 17 people who joined here. For those who haven't yet, here comes the first, here, here come the first few questions. We would like to learn something about you all. And the first question is, which country are you joining from today? I'm sure that you're all spread out across the world. So if you can just let us know, we have Canada, we have Portugal, France, Sweden, Italy, Poland. Okay. It's uh, rising in numbers. Okay, very nice. So we have um, quite a uh, quite Europe centered audience today but uh, also beyond, which is uh, nice to see that there's diversity in our, um, in our audience today. Very nice. So moving on to the next question. Which background do you have? We know that we've seen all types of different backgrounds here uh, throughout the talks, um, and we're curious to find out who we have here today. Okay, so we see a large number of students, systems engineers, a project manager as well, investor, project engineer, and quite a few others. Very nice, thank you so much for sharing. It's always good to know who is here and then particularly during the Q&A, uh, it's very interesting to have these cross-fertilizing conversations with, uh, with the speaker and the, the audience. Fantastic. And then maybe which industry do you work in or which industry would you like to be working in? So, yeah, the reason why we have indeed a lot of different sectors here or other uh, is because we do see oftentimes that similar um, similar types of challenges are being faced across industries. So it's very interesting to see, like, okay, space and aeronautics are quite similar, and there's a few other ones as well. In the last few weeks, we had some medical as well that were joining automotive. Very nice. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much for sharing. So 
now let's move to maybe some more fun questions. Um, first one, in which decade do you think humans will land on Mars? Okay, 2030s are coming in strong. Any 40s are following. There's some optimistic people, 2020s, very nice. Okay, I'm happy to see that everyone believes that we will still land uh, within the century. So, very good. We're, we're overall optimistic, I feel. We're maybe early 2030s on average. So, thank you so much for sharing. And then maybe to see what is your priority. Where do you think we should go first? Mars or back to the moon? Okay, moon is... Uh, going very strongly up. Okay, nice. So according to you today, we should be going back to the moon. So maybe the next student project can be uh, something related to going back to that surface, who knows? Now maybe a bit more serious questions before we dive deep into the talk. Um, if you're uh, working in a, a team designing complex hardware, are there any design methodologies that your organization is following? Okay, so I, I see from the, the graph that we have quite a divide between the agile methodology and the waterfall methodology and some are not sure, or some don't have a methodology they're clearly following. It's something that is a particularly interesting topic as well with student teams that maybe Jada will be touching upon later. So, and then uh, one last question. Which words come to mind to you when you think of leading a student team to design a satellite? Just wait a second until everyone is typing in their inputs. Okay, definitely exciting and hard work. Knowledge has been uh, fun, nice. I like to see that fun is central here. So it's difficult, it's fun, very good. Clearly time management is important, team management is important. Yeah, I wonder how many of these will come back later as well. <laughs> Charisma. <Like> chaos. Nice. <laughs> nice. Chaos. Ever-changing manpower. Cube. Very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. These are this is this is fun. This is really fun to look at how it's evolving as well. So fun and knowledge are, are probably the winners here but then we have quite a few uh, other ones as well. So, thank you for answering the question. The interactive session is over, but um, we do advise you to keep this link open because actually we will use this in the end for the Q&A as well. So, um, uh, I'll make sure that this is open throughout the whole talk. Uh, people can also be upvoting questions here. So, in the end, we'll basically be managing the Q&A through here. So, that being said, I'd like to welcome our speaker. Uh, our speaker today is Jada Panicha. Uh, she's a spacecraft engineer at OHB Sweden. Uh, very briefly about OHB Sweden, for those of you who don't know the organization, it's a Swedish provider of space systems and they develop and build um, satellites for different kinds of space missions, um, amongst other things. Um, so a little bit about Jada, she earned her bachelor's in aerospace engineering at Politecnico de Torino. In 2019, she completed her master's in aerospace engineering from KTH, uh, Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden. And during her master's thesis, she worked at GOMSpace to build a systems engineering tool. So she's currently working in the spacecraft department at OHB Sweden, 
and uh, she's involved in both systems engineering uh, as well as assembly integration and verification. So Jada, the floor is yours. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome you here today. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me well. Uh, so I I'll stop you... sharing my screen. Okay. I, okay. And then I, I will you can... share my screen as well. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for the introduction, Stefan, and thanks to the whole Valley Space team for, for reaching out. Um, yeah, so I've already been introduced. My name is Jada Stanisha. I come from Italy and I'm now based in Stockholm where I work at HP Sweden. Um, so I've been uh, working there for nearly five months, which is not very long. <laughs> in fact, I will not talk about my current job today. Uh, instead, I want to talk about something that I did two years ago. Um, so I was at uh, I was at KDH and I was uh, part of uh, I had the honor of being the team leader of this fantastic project that's called MIST. It's not quite an acronym. It stands for um, a Miniature Student Satellite. Uh, so what I want to do today essentially is show off what a student team is capable of achieving, and I was really happy to see that uh, there are some students in the in the audience. So uh, hopefully, if you're not in a student team, I I wish to inspire you to join one. <laughs> okay, so first of all, MIST is a CubeSat. A CubeSat is a miniaturized satellite made out of cube units with 10 centimeters long sides. The standard was created in 1999 in California, and initially it was developed to facilitate frequent and affordable access to space for educational purposes. So mainly targeting university students, in fact. But since then, it gained immense popularity. It's now widely adopted in hundreds of uh, private firms and government organizations worldwide. And the success is due to the low cost of uh, developing, building, and launching a CubeSat. And moreover, um, this, this was made possible because of the technological advancement that brought about the miniaturization of components. And so missions are getting more and more ambitious with time. So MIST is a 3U CubeSat, and here is myself for a size of reference. So you can see it's a 30 by 10 by 10. And here's another one. This is a 1U CubeSat developed at uh, Politecnico di Torino, um, where I did my, my bachelor, and I was also involved in the CubeSat uh, student team there. And this is eStart2. It, um, it was launched in April 2016, and it's still uh, successfully transmitting data. So that's nice. Um, so this project is organized as part of the KDH Space Center, which coordinates and promotes space-related activities. And the objective in mind is to establish KDH as a space university and a hub for Swedish um, space research and technology. So here's a shout out to Dr. Christoph Fugelsang. He's the director of the KDH Space Center, KDH professor and astronaut. He flew twice on the space shuttle. And uh, MIST couldn't be in better hands because the project manager is Dr. Sven Gran. He has a ton of experience. He's a veteran of uh, Swedish space activities. So now let's talk a bit more about the satellite itself. So we have six technical and scientific experiments that have been selected. So the first one is Nanoprop, proposed by GOMSpace Sweden, a Swedish company where I also did my master thesis. Um, so as cubes attain more and more interest from the industry, like I said, and other players as well who want to use this platform for more advanced missions, uh, propulsion capability becomes increasingly important. To date, several hundred CubeSats have been launched, but only very, very few with, uh, with a propulsion system on board. Um, so GOMSpace Sweden developed a propulsion module that is suitable for, for CubeSats. And the goal is to demonstrate precision control of the satellite and um, uh, the total impulse capability of the system as well. And we have Piazza Legs. Um, this is also proposed by a Swedish company, Piazza Motor. Um, this, there's an increasing interest to use piezoelectric electric materials in space. Um, they're materials uh, that have the ability to generate internal electrical charge from applied mechanical stress, or in other words, 
for apply voltage, you get changes in the width of the piezoelectric electric material. So this technology um, enables high precision and compact motors. And in the vacuum of space with the absence of air, it makes friction surfaces wear down a lot faster than on Earth. So the purpose of this experiment is to follow the motor's function lifetime, essentially follow its um, inevitable degradation with time. Um, then we have CUBES, which is proposed by a particle and astroparticle physics group, uh, the Department of Physics of KDH. It will study the complex radiation environment encountered by satellites at low Earth orbit and provide um, valuable qualification data for relatively new technology with very limited space heritage. SIC is proposed by the Integrated Devices and Circuits Group or the ICT School of KDH. The silicon carbide has been proposed as a semiconductor uh, instead of just silicon. Um, it, it's especially suited for harsh environments. So applications in space have been proposed, um, especially um, in electronics on the uh, Venus lander because of the, the high temperature. It's, in fact, it's been already uh, demonstrated that it can withstand up to 500 degrees Celsius. So again, this is another example of low TRL, technology readiness level, uh, seeking, um, yeah, offered for flight testing on, on MIST. And finally, we have SCUD. Uh, it's proposed by the Department of Electronic System, KDH. This experiment has two purposes. Uh, one is to test a new concept for a self-healing fault-tolerant computer system in a hostile environment, such as space. And, um, to see if it will be able to heal itself by correcting faults during runtime. And number two is to measure the expected SEU, so single event upset, uh, its frequency in lower Earth orbit, essentially. And it can also be used to detect solar flares because it's uh, closely related to the, to the number of single event upsets per day. So here is a common view of how people work together nowadays. Uh, this is basically us right now. So, except for some special approved lab work, students were not allowed to enter the university from the morning of the 18th of March. So the night before, students went into MIST labs and brought out equipment, computers, but no flight hardware. And it was also possible to arrange um, so that certain software packages that are uh, in fixed computers at KDH, they could be accessed remotely. By students, and this was the case, for example, for the Airbus Systema software package used for thermal analysis. And as for uh, major recent events, uh, all satellite subsystems have been delivered by IC Space, uh, which is a, a Dutch company, our supplier. And um, the MIST project participated in the ESA Flyer Satellite Competition during the fall of 2019. If you're not familiar with the competition, university student satellite projects compete for ESA's technical assistance and supply of a launch. Um, MIST registered in the phase C category, which is the system design phase, instead of the phase D, the final test phase, because the onboard software is, um, is still in the design phase. So um, MIST was selected to participate in a week long workshop in December, but withdrew from the competition because, um, well, for two reasons mainly. Uh, firstly, the design work would have to restart by writing detailed requirements, specifications, and to write all these documents, um, it would have taken all, all manpower and it would have absorbed everything in, instead, of, uh, instead of doing other work. And secondly, the, the earliest possible launch opportunity would have been in 2023, which is kind of a bummer because we actually wanted to launch before that. So um, what good news is that uh, there's additional funding. Um, the School of Engineering Science Sciences decided to support the MIST project with 1 million Swedish crowns. So I want to get right into it. <laughs> How do we actually build a satellite? If you don't know what you're looking at right now, uh, this is Valley Space. It's a great system engineering tool that can do a lot of different things. MIST, it's used to keep track of mass and power budgets and keeping data up to date. By the way, we also use it at OHB Sweden in much the same way. Um, so as you can see here, you can add 
for your components and their their properties and it makes it so much easier to analyze results and, uh, and share them with your teammates. So during the past year, the power and data simulations have been updated. There's new values for experiments and subsystems. Uh, power losses, data overheads have been implemented. So the MIST uh, system engineering is, uh, is looking very good at the moment. So mechanical is also looking great. Uh, the CAD model is now completed. The drawings of all experiments um, have been uh, reviewed. The size of the spacers, number of washers needed to mount experiments have been determined. Um, there's been a fit check with the prototype. Printed circuit boards have been carried out to verify the results. And the SATA assembly procedure is almost completed. And so is the screw torque uh, requirements. So also all the necessary stainless and titanium screws, washers, nuts, uh, have they've been ordered and obtained from the subsystem supplier ISA space. So dummy solar panels for thermal tests have been designed and some have been manufactured. Uh, draft procedures for assembly and vibration tests have been prepared, including which flight hardware to be included in the tests. And uh, mounting interfaces to thermal vacuum chamber have been have been designed. And here's a look at the harness thing. So the harness um, was defined in tabular form as to connections, connector pin allocation, wire size, length, twisting, braiding, lots of fun stuff and complicated as well. It was decided that the manufacturing of the harness needs professional quality. And so it requires the contractor to carry out. So that meant that the requirements have to be in the form of a drawing for all 17 harness items. Um, the drawings were ready in early February, but um, due to COVID-19 restrictions, um, so one company abstained from bidding, another promised the proposal, but there was a third one, a talent analyst, that offered to do the work um, free of charge if missed supplied the wiring. Very kind offer, so a sponsorship agreement was, was signed in April. Moving on to the thermal analysis. So um, alternate orbits were uh, analyzed uh, to, to find out how sensitive temperatures are to variation of orbit parameters that uh, can be caused by the choice of launch opportunity. And they were found to be small. So at the moment, um, the main focus has been on instrumentation, support equipment, satellite test configuration and temperature profiles all the thermal balance and thermal cycling tests. And also the thermal team supported the mechanical team in analyzing the effects of using various materials in screws, washers, and, and nuts. Uh, as for the, the OBC uh, onboard computer, so this year there was a major restructuring of the original onboard software. Um, it, yeah, it was, the, it was made to facilitate further development work concentrating on the telemetry and telecom and functions. And uh, so design decisions concerning various telemetry modes to be used in different operational scenarios that have been taken during the spring. And um, in February, the project got two additional supervisors to work on the complete chain of sending commands from the mission control system to a generic experiment simulator that can be configured to, to emulate the the various experiments. Uh, the transceiver and ground station computer arrived, as well as the antenna. And the antenna allocation has been decided so that the cables can easily be routed from, from the antenna into an office where the MIST control center can be located. So the ground station is coming soon. And this is the flat stat functional testing setup, uh, which is the environment um, that simulates the power system. So uh, solar panels and experiment power drain as a function of time. And on the right, you can see the newly developed sun sensor simulator. So for attitude determination and control system, unfortunately, I didn't have any cool pictures to share with you guys. I hope you can understand and that no one's offended. <laughs> but I still wanted to mention it because it's, uh, it's a vital uh, subsystem. So the, the software was also obtained by IC Space, our uh, subsystem supplier. And the student um, made it work in a software in the loop simulation. And um, 
So basically the orbit, the magnetic field, the altitude dynamics, it was simulated in a MATLAB script, but it was very difficult. Uh, so three students were sent to ISIS space in February for a three-day workshop uh, where the problems with the simulation were fixed and it started yielding meaningful results. Uh, so at the moment there is um, uh, there's work on tuning parameters uh, being formed and perturbations are being modeled. And also going on is the presentation, um, sorry, is the preparation of the software test environment for planned uh, hardware in the loop tests of attitude control. So that was the fun part, uh, the actual development of a satellite. Um, it can quickly stop being fun if it's not organized properly. So this part um, may be obvious, uh, a little boring, but it's necessary. So uh, first of all, continuity is extremely important to transfer knowledge across time. This was, um, this was the main challenge um, that we had in MIST because students would mostly join for one semester and then leave. So it was, it was very difficult to transfer knowledge, which is why uh, we had to recruit students to, to stay two semesters and have worth credits. And, um, and also supervisors um, need to stay longer um, and they need to be professionals. And they can also be students, supervising, they can be paid if needed. Um, the sub teams, you, you just, um, I just shown you how, how they're divided basically. So you have one area per sub team and at least one supervisor per sub team. Uh, students are asked to take initiatives, meeting with supervisors and other sub teams. So basically there's no the, the meetings are not forced, they, they only take them if, if needed because nobody loves to have a thousand meetings that they don't need. Um, in terms of uh, recruitment, it's uh, quite difficult to recruit students in spring to start in the fall and stay two semesters because, well, first year master students haven't arrived yet or they haven't chosen their track and the second year they do their thesis work in the following spring. So it's necessary to accept single semester students as well, although it's not ideal. Um, it's difficult, but it's important to plan in advance for the thesis uh, because being spontaneous just carries a risk of not contributing to the project and just waste everybody's time. And also if they could uh, start a semester early, that would, that would change everything. It would make it so much better. Uh, in terms of uh, handling documents, uh, has to be done according to work breakdown structure. Um, they have to be numbered or dated because configuration control is necessary, which is why you cannot absolutely have simultaneous editing of text documents. It's, uh, it's dangerous, you lose, you lose track of everything that's been done and you could lose many, many hours of work. And the documents need to be stored in the cloud, such as Dropbox, and the software can be we handle them in Git. Communications, uh, again, it's pretty basic. You gotta have project meetings. So you wanna report progress, plans, uh, identify problems. And very important is to set up troubleshooting because say you're a contractor, you have a, you have a meeting with a customer, with ESA or whatever, you should never just report the problem. You should always indicate a solution because you gotta have a plan forward, otherwise you lose credibility with the, with the customer. And uh, it's really important for students to learn this early on. And um, so they, they run the meetings, they take minutes. Um, evening or lunch meetings are, are great for some reason. People tend to be concise and just cut, go straight to the point. And keep them short is very important because again, no one likes to just sit in long meetings. Um, but somehow uh, Zoom helped. Uh, Zoom meetings tended to be much shorter, so that's good. And so you have major reviews uh, per semester. So first you start with a kickoff indoctrination, sort of get everyone on the same page so that they know um, what, what it's all about, what we're trying to do here. In the mid-semester meeting to check progress and initiate mid-course correction. I think we're all familiar with the uh, the beginning of a project and most of the time is just spent trying to figure out what to do and then maybe the second half is when you actually do something. <laughs> so that happens. And then finally, of course, you want to summarize your results and present a plan for the next semester. So for work style, so the electronic communication system that changes every year, it doesn't matter. Um, 
Slack works great with the different channels that you can subscribe to. Um, WhatsApp is also great for smaller groups. It really doesn't matter as long as the messages can be tracked and retrieved. Um, as for contractor contacts, they are started by a teacher a professional because students are, are here to learn and they, they get to do the follow-up and they get to see how, how it's done. Um, so we try to emulate industrial style work by learning lab disciplines, such as how to, how to behave uh, with, uh, with delicate, expensive uh, flight hardware and uh, how to handle non-conformance report. You want to write test procedures and you want to follow them. So I want to end, uh, this is the final slide, and uh, I want to end with the most valuable lesson by Sven Graham. Uh, he taught me the ethos of engineering. First of all, do more with less. Um, you have what you have, you gotta make it work. <laughs> Just make it work. Uh, you wanna pay attention to detail in all phases, worry. So if a student comes up to me and says, I'm worried about this thing, well, the answer is great, good. <laughs> you have to be worried because it means that you're aware that what you're doing is difficult and important. Um, the assumption is at the root of all mistakes. Think, always second guess, ask questions, never be afraid. Um, if it is not tested, it will fail. Test. It, it doesn't matter if, uh, oh, I just changed this one little thing, it's not going to affect everything else. It will. It will. <laughs> Document what you do, be professional, write. Uh, I think we're also all guilty of, of this when we say, I'm going to remember this, I don't need to write it down, and then the next day is completely gone. So, and then finally, teamwork in the real world. You don't want to play schedule games. If you're late, say so. It's, it's not a problem. It's, uh, you're only going to make it worse. You can't hide. <laughs> and uh, finally, don't ask what your coworker can do for you. And you can finish the, the sentence yourself. So if you want to, if you want to keep updated with the, um, with the MIST satellite, uh, there's a blog on mistsatellite.space. And if you want to ask me any questions, you can do so now, or you can also send me an email, feel free. This is my, this is my contact. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for the talk, Jada. This is very, very interesting to see the inner workings of the, the student team. So uh, I see that we have quite a few questions already coming up in the in the site.com slash Jarvis. I'm going to share my screen uh, so we can have them available all together. Um, can you confirm you can see my screen? Okay, so, yes, so here we have a number of questions already. Let me just move this away. So Jed, I would say, let's maybe start off with um, the ones that are highest upvoted. Here we have a first question which asks, how is this project and the teams managed? Did you use a specific tool for project management? So like I said, the project manager was uh, Sven Gron. I was the team leader. And so we had a group, a smaller group of people that was made of me, Sven, and the supervisors. And we would have, uh, we would have meetings. Um, we had uh, action item lists that, that we had to tackle each week. We knew what, what needed to be done. Uh, we knew the status of uh, all the students, what, what they were up to, what were the challenges, what, what needed to be done next. And yeah, um, this, this is how the, the project was managed. We had the, we had the sub teams. Um, there were meetings between uh, the sub teams when needed. Uh, we also tried to make um, a new concept of uh, called, um, we had these sessions where the students would get together and work and even, I mean, even if they were working on their own thing, uh, it was good to have the whole team together in the same place. Um, so I, I hope this answers the question. <laughs> and maybe just to add on to the question, was there a specific tool that you're using? Any software tools that you were particularly using? I imagine it comes from maybe someone who works in a student team that's curious to think of 
how they could manage their project differently? Well, not, not really. Like, I mean, we had uh, the, the things that I mentioned, we had messaging tools and we had uh, value space for system engineering. Um, yeah, not, not specific tool for project management, I would say. Okay. Thank you for, thank you for the answer, Jada. Um, I'm going to mark this one as answered. Um, the next question we have here, how to start to make a CubeSet? So, I, I understand from, from your experience, it was like there's always a handover, right? But if you yes. were to imagine when you start from scratch. I mean, a satellite is a very complex system. And I'm afraid there is no way that one person could do it alone. That you absolutely need a team and you absolutely need um, at least a number of experts. You can have, you can have students. The students can achieve incredible things as I hope I've shown you guys. Um, but you, you need, they need to be guided and you have to have professionals that know what they're doing and, and you have to have multiple people. There is not one single person that has the knowledge uh, throughout all the different um, subsystems that I mentioned. You, you have to have a mechanical sub team, a thermal and OBC functional testing and so on. Um, so you, you, need, um, you need a really great group of people. That's, um, that's what I would say <laughs> you need. Okay, so, so that's the, those, those are the first elements. You need a great group of people. I hope that helps you, uh, Julio, with, uh, with the start of your QSET team, hopefully. Um, so thank you for that answer. So next question. Okay, that's, that's probably not really targeting you, but I'll just give a 30 second answer here. Uh, to Anonymous who's asking us whether Valley Space is hiring interns uh, during Corona. We have successfully onboarded a large, uh, quite a few team members already uh, throughout these times. So if you're interested in that, you're welcome to have a look on the website and drop us a message if you're interested in one of the available positions. Um, so next question, what are the differences between working in a university student team and in the industry? It's probably a very interesting one of like, what are the lessons learned that you maybe took away? Um, what are the additional factors that you probably didn't have to think of at the university, but then in industry you should and the other way around. So um, when, when developing a satellite, the end goal is basically the same. You want, you want to develop a satellite. This is also what, uh, what we do at OHP Sweden, and this is what I did um, in MIST. So the, the, main, uh, the main factors are basically the same. You, you want to build a satellite, you have its different subsystems. And again, you got to have a, a nice team that knows what they're doing or is willing to learn. And so the, the idea there is, is kind of the same. There's not a different way to do things. What is uh, maybe different in an academic setting is, um, is that you, there are things that you have to do that you might not necessarily do in the lab because you know, when, when you're a company and your end goal is, is selling a product and so you're gonna do everything to sell this, this satellite. In university, the end goal is educating students, uh, really. So that's, that's where it's more focused on. And for example, if you are writing a thesis, then there is a number of, um, well, there's a standard that you have to meet let's say. So when you're writing a master thesis, for example, you, there, there are a lot of things that you have to do that might not necessarily have something to do with the project itself, but it has more to do with the whole learning experience. Mm -hmm. But it's really not that different at the end of the day. It's, it's still, you're, you're making a satellite, that's what you're doing. So it's, it's not completely different. So it was... Um, so it was a great, uh, it was really a great experience um, to, to work in MIST because it prepared me for, for the industry for sure. Yeah, I was going to, to ask a follow-up question on that. Like, what would you say are maybe your top three lessons learned that you're now also applying on a day-to-day -day basis aside from, let's say, the pure technical element of your job, but really the way of working? Oh, the top three lessons learned. <laughs> I would say definitely that last slide that I showed, uh, those were my, my main lessons that I learned. Uh, thanks to Sun John. 
and yes just uh, especially never be afraid because especially when you're a student you have this tendency to think that you don't know enough and you're not good enough and then everybody else knows exactly what they're doing and i can promise you that's not always the case so we we can all help each other we all know things that somebody else might not know so just not being afraid is probably the number one thing that is is try and be confident and if you're passionate about something and it, it will work out it will show <laughs> Very happy to hear about all these parallels that you you, you found out you could grow into into your role basically through through your university work. Um, so I'll mark this one as answered. There's quite a lot of questions that keep coming, which is uh, very nice to see. Um, how did you manage design iteration to, fin to finish the work on time? Well, um, <laughs> so the project started in 2015. So it has been going on for quite a while. Um, well, because of the, the issues that, that I mentioned, especially with, with the students coming and going, there has been a great deal of students who has worked and missed. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's really no, uh, there's no magic secret here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you were looking for a quick, um, a quick way out, there really isn't one, you just, you just got to do it. And it's, it's really difficult at the beginning to know uh, how many design iterations are, are going to be. There will always be more than you think. <laughs> and so the, yeah, it's, you will probably not finish the work on time. There's one thing that I learned in the space industry is this one. So just, yeah, just go with it. <laughs> just give it a try. <laughs> yeah, ho hopefully we can help somehow with that. So if you're, uh... If anyone's interested in learning more about that, you can always have a chat later. So thank you for uh, that lesson. I think it's an important one for everyone to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so I, th I think this question, uh, the next one, who funded the project? Uh, did you have to go after, after sponsorships? Or did, were they, let's say, uh, in, in partnership with your university? How did that happen? If, if a student team is interested in raising funding, how did you go about that? Yeah, so because, uh, because this was part of the uh, KDH Space Center, um, it was sort of not outside of the project, but let's just say that I don't really know what the process was to get funding um, because it was handled by uh, other people. But I, I would assume there was some convincing <laughs> to be done to get funding for sure. Um, but yeah, we, we've had it so far. It's been, it's been going really well. So. It's good that people believe in, in this project and we managed to get the funding so far. Fantastic. Yeah, probably for, uh, if you imagine starting a new student team, you'd have to uh, start creating these partnerships and find let's say, strategic partners to really help you out with that. So whoever's asking, um, maybe they can also uh, send you an email afterwards to, to learn more about how it works for your team. Um, so I'll just mark this one as answered here. Could you maybe briefly summarize, I know that you mentioned a few software tools throughout your presentation. Um, like you mentioned how you work together, which tools you use, um, what other software tools did you use that people would benefit from knowing? Well, one that I can think of that anyone could use is definitely Valley Space. <laughs> I know I mentioned it, but it's, uh, it works really well for any, any type of system, uh, not necessarily for CubeSat. Um, it's just, it, it, it makes it really easy to, to work together in a team. And um, well, then, for example, the, the onboard software was, um, it used uh, a language that was specifically developed here at KDH. Uh, and it's an extension of the C programming language. It's called Time C. Um, this was done because, um, because of a PhD student used it as a, as a case study and he was also a supervisor. Um, so it, it, really, it really depends um, what your end goal is. But, um, but yeah, I see Python are the obvious ones. MATLAB is, is great, but sometimes has its uh, limitations. Um, but yeah, I, again, there's nothing uh, groundbreaking that you haven't heard of. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's always reassuring. 
it's not that you're working with some black magic tools that are <laughs> out of this world. Um, okay, so this one is answered. The next one is very interesting. Um, and it's also a question I have for later to ask you. Um, so given how students can be excited to pursue out of the box ideas all the time, did you ever have to limit ideas given the limited resources within the student team and how did you deal with that? This is a very interesting question. And, um, unfortunately, I don't think I can answer it because um, I, was, uh, I was in this project quite, it was already quite advanced. So I would assume these crazy ideas to happen at the very beginning of a project when nothing is set in stone, you're just starting. So you could, de you could do anything really you, when, you, when you haven't written any requirements yet and you just, you just started with an idea, we've got to make a cube cell, what, what are we going to do? And so I can picture in that situation that people just going completely crazy with ideas. But in my case, I joined um, the, pro the, the project when it was already quite uh, in an advanced state. So it was well-defined what needed to be done in order to progress. So it's, it's different. I wouldn't say it's worse or better. It's just different. Uh, you may not mm -hmm. have all the freedom in trying out uh, out-of-the-box ideas, uh, but also you're not completely lost. Um, you might lose track of of the end goal if you yeah you can just go deep down that rabbit hole um, and at least yeah you that doesn't happen when you already know what you have to do um, yeah so and probably the experts are also really helpful yeah. with that to to make sure that you're staying on track and that you don't yeah. make let's say decisions that will sidetrack you over time I mean I've had um, I've had other experiences, for example, in other projects during uh, uh, my studies at KDH when we had, uh, we had group projects. And, and then, then we had exactly the situation I was saying before. You're just starting a project, you're sitting down with your teammates and maybe somebody says something completely crazy. And then uh, I actually did have to shut down something because it, 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 wasn't, um, it wasn't beneficial for the rest of the team. And, yeah, so I guess you have to be harsh sometimes, which is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, we have still eight minutes left. I hope that we won't have to be harsh and shut down some of the questions. Um, so moving on to the next ones, um, a non-technical question here. What made you think you would be a good leader? Would you say that you did a good job at that? Were you successful? So if I was any successful at all, I definitely owe it to the project manager, not to myself. And with the other question, what made you think you would be a good leader? Uh, well, I, I never thought that the thing is that when I walked in, when I walked into the office asking to join the MIST project, um, I had a long conversation just about how much I liked satellites and I wanted hands-on experience. Uh, I really wanted to learn as much as possible. And um, so, yeah, we were talking about what I could do and I was really excited about harnessing or just anything that would let me touch the satellites with my own two hands. So I was really expecting to end up in the mechanical team or really any other sub team. So I, I was not expecting the offer to be team leader and that was very scary because it was not what I wanted and not what I thought I could do. But I just, uh, I trusted the project manager that if he, if he thought that I could do it, then, then I, I tried, I gave it a try. And I'm really, I'm really, really grateful for that because I, I really liked having the, the whole picture of because when you do one specific thing you might lose track of, of the rest right you just so concentrated on your own thing and then it, it becomes separated it's not even a satellite anymore it's mm -hmm. just your own thing that you're doing but uh, with the position that i was in it really helped me um understand that what i liked doing was system engineering because i liked having uh yeah i like working with the system 
the satellite as a whole system and not not separate it into its own parts. So I would say it definitely, uh, yeah, it, it 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 changed my career as in it helped me figure out which one it, sh it should have been. So. <laughs> very nice. Well, congratulations. It sounds like Thanks. a a very very <laughs> yeah, good experience. Nice. Um, okay, so here we have one that was just asked and is already about the three uh, other people having that question. So which European Championships would you recommend for students related to CubeSats? Do you know of any you can recommend? Well, for example, the one I mentioned, the Fly Your Satellite by ESA, that's, there's mm -hmm. a competition. And uh, but ESA has also a bunch of different workshops. Usually in, uh, in Belgium, there is the, um, there is the academic uh, center of ESA. And those are the ones that I'm most familiar with. Um, there's probably more. and. Yeah, sorry, I don't really know about the others, but, um, but yeah, definitely keep ESA in your radar. All right. So good luck to those who are uh, looking for for applying. I imagine they yeah, can learn a lot from your process as well. <laughs> and choose a university that has a CubeSat team. Then if they don't, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, on the more quantitative side, how time consuming would you say was your CubeSat management experience? How many hours per week could you? Could you yeah, uh, well, I, I did it for credits. So I would say okay. it wasn't time consuming at all because it was like another course. And so okay. this is also part of the, of the management uh, solutions is if you, if you give students credits, then they will work because they will have the time. Because if you have your normal university workload, you have your exams, your projects, like your lectures, and you're not going to dedicate any time at all to this. So, so it's, it's not possible to consider it an extra thing in your free time. And uh, so, yeah, per personally, and most other students, they got credits for it. So I would say just like a regular course, but more fun. Okay, nice. So it's nice that you could take it as part of your classes, as your as part of your COVID, basically. Yes. Okay, and we only have three minutes left. So what I propose is that you just pick a question that we still answer, and uh, then we'll have to close off the session. Okay. For any other well, questions, people will just have to get in touch with you. <laughs> yes, I, I gave you my email, so feel free to email me. Um, but I'm going to pick um, the one about myself. <laughs> that's my favorite topic. No, but how did you get a job at OHP Sweden? That's the one that I can answer more easily. Um, and also, like, I hope to inspire people uh, because I applied three times. So if you get a no, uh, well, maybe try again. <laughs> no, but it was, uh, it was a time uh, they were spaced out. They were for different, uh, different applications. It was not easy uh, during the, the interview process. Um, well, my, my current boss basically told me that he was looking at 150 candidates. So I didn't have my, my hopes up to high. Uh, but it turned out that uh, this missed experience, um, at least I, I honestly believe that it was this missed experience that really um, that gave me a good chance to be where I am. So to all the students, definitely, definitely, definitely join a student team because it gives you valuable experience that future recruiters, um, yeah, they really value, so. Very nice. Well, um, thank you so much for, for all the questions. Thank you so much for all the engagement as well. Um, it's been a real pleasure to host this, uh, this series of webinars for you. Um, I want to thank everyone who participated, and I would like to also invite you to next week's session. Uh, Nicholas Lindsay from Gilmore Space will be talking next week. So thank you again, Giada, and thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you. I wish everyone a nice, a nice evening, a nice day, or uh, wherever you are located.